Welcome everyone to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host, and this is the Bad Batch Report. And with me for all of these episodes is Kyle Gould. Welcome. Yes, physically in person with all of you. It's like it's actually quite a rarity, I would say, for many people in this day and age. But we're married and work next to each other. <laughs> it's true. Sleep next to each other. Think next to each other. Yeah. But we very rarely sit in this particular way, which is looking at each other's eyes. That's true. And, you know, generally making goo goo eyes at each other. We don't we definitely don't watch things together. No. Either. So there's that. We didn't even watch this together. And we could have. We could have. We actually like had the opportunity. I tend to watch shows that I'm analyzing with noise canceling headphones on. Mm. <laughs> Uh, just so I can like hear the music and hear all the sound design and things like that. And I have trouble um, sort of absorbing all of it in... Hello? <laughs> Nothing's wrong. Okay. I have trouble absorbing all of it if I'm watching it like in a large room, except for, you know, like a four, 5.7.1 surround sound setup. Yeah, where it can completely encompass your senses. Yeah, whereas like noise canceling headphones are like the easiest way to sort of replicate that, especially with the like really wonderful sound design and music of this episode. I didn't watch it with headphones this time. I just watched it with the normal sound from my iPhone while I laid in bed. <laughs> I know you had quite a busy day today, so you were yeah. like catching up on stuff. We're recording this like not at the normal time that we record stuff. It's way later. We did not watch yeah. it at the regular time. I usually watch it at my desk, take a break, write down a bunch of notes. Today, I drove all the way to Edmonton and back, which is like 500 miles <laughs> worth of driving. It's a good thing you have a hybrid. And uh, and when I got home, I crashed for two and a half hours and then woke <laughs> up and watched the, sh the episode and then just finished like a 20 minute game of tag with my son on the main floor. So I may be a little... Short of breath. Breathy, yeah. <laughs> but I'm ready for this. Because... It just adds to the experience. All right. So let's dig into this episode, yes. which is Battle Scars. I know. Two words again. Maybe apropos of the episode. I mean, they more are than about the other to ones. get Battle Scars. Yes. I mean, like, yes, they're all going to be permanently scarred <laughs> after this episode. And I think that the, the location that they go to is... A significant battle scar as well. Yeah. So. But hey, like, I just want to point out, I was right about Wrecker. And. <laughs> well, you said that last week, too. No, I know. But like. How many weeks am I going to have to listen to you say I was right about Wrecker? I mean, this is the last one because he's had the chip removed. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And also, I was really glad that, like, <laughs> Rex was here. <laughs> Rex is just, yeah. Anytime he shows up, I just. Uh... I really enjoyed this episode a lot. Goodness me. <laughs> you like the shaved blonde look? Is that what it is? Uh, I mean, he himself is just such a cool character. I've really enjoyed like all of his arcs in Clone Wars. I have like a little uh, Rex minifig on my gym bag. Uh, he's missing an arm now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, they, they don't last, but um, I love him a lot. And is it because he's blue and white like R2? I don't... <laughs> Maybe. I haven't analyzed this this much. Um, Interesting. Um, no. They kept calling him captain, but didn't he get promoted? <laughs> no, he never got promoted. Yeah, he got promoted at the very end. No. It, 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 well, the promotion just didn't go through because cause remember I he mean, was getting promoted. In the last season of Clone Wars, he gets a promotion. And then like five minutes later, Order 66 comes down the pipe. I mean, like, like he's in charge mm -hmm. of like... The they, group that Ahsoka is going after, but he's still a captain because only commanders like report to full Jedi and she was never a full Jedi. It was a whole thing. He had to be promoted to be put in charge of the battle. Uh, and then and they were like, well, we, you know, because he does he deserve it? And I don't remember that. But yeah. I'll take your word. I'm sure somebody will correct us. He was he was promoted and then it never really came to any fruition because. Well, Order nobody 66 else knew is, him at, like that, too. Yeah, Order 66 is enacted, and then he doesn't have... But he leads that whole troops, right? Like, Yeah. That's that whole arc. Like, uh, uh, and Ahsoka's he's named Commander. So. Was he? I... Yeah. 
he had to be in order to I mean that makes sense but the Bad Batch themselves only know him they, as captain. True. They only know him as captain. Yeah. I mean, the world at large only knows him as captain. Because... But we don't start there. We we actually start like mid heist, I guess, where they're stealing a, a lizard. Scene. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just set up to like show how how Wrecker wasn't doing well and how like the situation that they're in is not super beneficial to them. Fair with Sid. Welcome to this episode, short on plot, short on dialogue. Heavy we on. We need to get this one thing done. <laughs> How slowly can we do it? <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and it was it was written by Jennifer Corbett, too. So it was know, like tied right? into sort This of... is an integral one. Yeah. And it's a bit of a finicky one because there's not much to do. So <laughs> Jennifer's like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll figure something out. <laughs> it it was it was high on emotionality. There was a lot of character moments, right? Like Omega being like, "No, I'm going to stay with Wrecker." <laughs> and and uh also like Wrecker chasing after her. Like yeah, those, the last 10 minutes are those things themselves like and and seeing how much the bad batch and the I guess adult clones <laughs> Um, it just seeing how much the adult clones have been, uh, I don't know, the change in them and also like how, how focused they are on Omega was really good too. Like it showed a lot for me personally. I really enjoyed all of the character moments that we got to see specifically, you know, the ones with Wrecker. We got a lot of good stuff with, uh, tech like really good stuff with tech this episode um he had some really funny lines too <laughs> and uh i really also enjoyed uh you know hunter kind of and that hunter um rex relationship was was really good too mm -hmm. i still find echo to be like a struggle for me personally because i'm like you you have stuff to do but very rarely does he like kind of shine in an episode, except fair. for the droid episode where he pretended to be a droid. Yeah, that's fair. So um, the lizard's name was Ruby. And one of the cool moments after they complete the the gig, you know, um, was Wrecker and Omega went and basically got caramel corn, which was really awesome. I guess Mantwell mix or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looked like it looked like like popcorn popcorn we're covered. done the mission we get popcorn yeah <laughs> they went to uh oh what's that popcorn place that you used to always get popcorn from kernels kernels yeah they went to kernels this podcast not sponsored by kernels <laughs> so what's your favorite kind of uh coated popcorn oh uh jalapeno jack oh yeah yeah because yeah. i like it a little spicy and a little cheddary i do like the spicy dill pickle too so those are those are probably my two favorites. I like two kinds. So I like kettle corn because yeah. it's like very sweet and kind Blech. of salty. Um, very specific kind of popcorn that you can get at like carnivals and stuff like that, at least in Canada. Yep. And I also like caramel corn. Blech. And and like regular like popcorn too. But if I'm going to get specialty popcorn, maybe cheddar. Like I'll go for a nice cheddar popcorn. Yeah, you did kind of eat through the cheddar mix, the the Chicago mix where they've got like cheddar and caramel popcorn. That was, that's what it looked like to me was like the Chicago mm. caramel and cheddar popcorn. Yeah, it looked like tricolor popcorn that you can get yeah. at the carnival where it's like some are green, some are blue, some are regular. Yeah. I don't like any of them. <laughs> I often wonder if How was like... you, what was your overview, overall view of the episode? How oh, I like loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I did feel like it was a little disjointed because mm. of how it started, which the setup was just like, oh, they're returning from a mission, but that's not important. Don't pay attention to that. But we spent a lot of time on it and it felt like, and I think that this is to the, to what you were saying with Jennifer Corbett being like, this is a hard episode. It needs to happen, but we don't really have a lot of stuff around it. Um, it, it really felt... needed a cross, uh, sorry to interrupt. It really needed a crosshair cutaway. Oh, yeah. Like, Instead of having the thing where they're finding another pet that they're bringing in. Yeah. 
just have them come back from that have and give us a crosshair moment in the episode. Yeah, I think that would have uh, absolved me of the feeling of Deus Ex Machina. Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> Rex happened to show up. You know, of course, with like he got I mean, the information. Yeah. yeah, no, he got the information, but it it just still felt a little like ah, uh, we we're doing this because we must. Yeah, you know, and that and that's fine. They had been setting it up from the first episode. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I would have preferred, like you said, maybe some more emotionality into like, well, there's people out there that don't have the choice to remove the chip. And we haven't checked in with Crosshair, like you said, and I mm-hmm. would want to know what he's doing. And I want to know how bad he's, how, how bad off he is right now. <laughs> yeah. Feel sad. I want to feel sad about him. <laughs> so how did you feel about the episode, Kyle? Yeah, high level. Uh, I'm still shruggy. I don't know. I mean, I, because I, I, I knew all of this was coming. Yeah. So I know. Actually, so first they're they're immune to the chip, but they still have to remove the chips. Mm-hmm. It seems like a a a false barrier to proceed, like a unnecessary struggle, since we know they're going to be resistant. Why why have them not just be defective in the first place? Um. It, I did not really necessarily feel the tension. And then when the moment comes with uh, Wrecker and Omega uh, towards the end, I, 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 it felt like plot armor was on everybody there. Yeah. Like he, he couldn't really hurt anyone to any. I just worried for Tech and Echo, but they didn't really get put in too much of harm's way. Yeah. So no, I wasn't. It didn't feel like there was any stakes involved, mu- unlike you know the finale of clone wars where the ship is falling rex is like you know activated and it's uh you know down to ahsoka to try and solve this problem exactly so uh, like i i agree with you it just felt we we know all of this in the meta and Mm -hmm. so but like that's always a problem with star wars you know people survive you know because like they tell stories in the in the past about yeah. characters we we know a lot more about rex in rebels so it's like rex is never yeah. in danger he's not in danger he has plot armor up the wazoo yeah he can't even be physically hurt yeah. L- unlike your gym bag rex he can't lose an arm <laughs> he can't lose an arm i was always worried about that i'm like what if rex loses an arm because my gym bag rex lost an arm and i was really excited about the location they go to. I know. It's so cool. Braca, the starship graveyard. It's amazing. It reminded me of all the things I loved about uh, Jakku mm-hmm. and like the starship graveyard there, but like a new and interesting location for a starship graveyard. And like these places are very creepy. We actually yeah. have versions of these things, especially for airplanes. Like they like there's like i think one in arizona where all of these defunct airplanes all hang out where people look like companies will pay to like go and look for parts or go and look for replacements and this stuff like that but they go specifically to this place in arizona because it never rains mm-hmm. and it's so arid it it maintains the airplanes without rusting <laughs> Welcome to Braca, the preservative planet. I mean, it's not really because it's like floating on water. Like, yeah, there's some weird stuff going on there. Oh, I didn't yeah. think it was floating on water. It's just that there's water. There was water. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. yeah. But but, but they... you remember Braca from before, right? Do I? You don't? No. You you didn't think you'd ever seen Braca before? Uh no. Cal Kestis. <gasps> That's Braca. That's Braca. The beginning of that game is Braca. What? Yeah, they brought Braca over from the beginning of Jedi. Jedi Fallen Order. Fallen Order. Here we go. Yeah. So here's. Oh my god, I have seen Braca. No, yeah. this makes sense. Yeah. I thought you were super excited because they're all the the scrappers are all wearing the same garb, diff- different helmet. Yeah, right? yeah, but yeah. But like of all... the ones that we see. Oh yeah. my god. Okay, to be fair, I did watch this fairly quickly and we were recording like... I understand. Afterwards. Uh, I saw it and was like, oh my gosh, this is such a wonderful scene. Like, tie yeah, in? what a nice tie-in, Braca. I mean, it. I'm not too it, sure, but Jedi Fallen Order is happening 
well, a few years later. So yeah, no, it is. It's like it's a few years after this because yeah. this is like right after Order sixty six. So like it looks like there's a whole society that ends up getting built on Baraka that is not there yet potentially. Well, it's just like Grand Prairie or Fort McMurray here in in, in Alberta, where the you know there's all this natural resource of these these ships that needs to be mined and collected. Mm-hmm. And and that's where you can p- basically pull money out of the ground. And so it's going to attract people and it's going to build a society around that because support people will then come in to get money from the people that are pulling the money out of the ground. Yeah. And that's what this ship graveyard essentially is, is money out of the ground. That's so cool. I did not recognize it at all. Oh, man. So cool. If you haven't played Jedi Fallen Order and you really liked Baraka, I highly recommend picking it up. I mean, yeah, like the intro planet is so cool because you actually like it, it's it's almost like a maze that you're going through and like yeah it, take the same path as the bad batch who got a little bit closer to the water and the ground than i think they wanted to but yeah. even the cable that they dragged across is the same type of cable from jedi fallen Order. oh so cool i'm yeah that's awesome i'm so happy <laughs> oh uh and the scrapper guild now that you're like mentioning that is something from jedi fallen order too yep Ah. Uh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at you catching stuff. I'm way too tired today. That's fair. It's it's you, you totally drove to Edmonton and back today. No, I just had a different tiring you day. You really did. It's fair. That's I'm not and you streamed last night and you're here again giving it up for your fans. <laughs> as we talk about the bad batch. Yeah. Um no, that's so cool. I'm yay, Star Wars. Yay. I mean Jedi Fallen Order is like one of like i really love knights of the old republic and knights of the old republic too but jedi fallen order like is so solid as a video game yeah and explores the force in so many interesting ways so it is interesting and neat it is very much a movie you get to play yeah um as opposed to like kotor where there are lots of choices and there isn't very many choices in no. jedi fallen order and there's not and it's not very open you, I mean, you can get lost in the world <clears throat> yeah but there's really only one path forward and you can make a choice to go to a different planet in the beginning but as soon as you get there you're locked off so you can really only explore like a like a third of it mm-hmm. before you get restricted to being able to go further yeah yeah i like that they parked away from where they wanted it <laughs> uh. i think that felt very real to me like oh no we'll we'll approach on foot but yeah yeah yeah, and then uh, you know, Wrecker's Sphere of Heights comes into play as they're doing the cabling and and going across that. Um, and shout out to Star Wars's love of tentacles. Oh, once again, <laughs> I I have to cop to something as well. I know what the name of that creature is that attacked him because I was I I, I did not know the name of the creature from A New Hope. Like, I didn't know what that was called Okay. in the trash compactor. I just was like, that's the tentacle monster with the eye. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know any more. The Dianoga? That. Right. But I know that now because in Flight Risk, I fought one I in the last game. I don't think it was a Dianoga. It was. It was. It, in it, Yeah. Because, really? yeah, if you're watching the subtitles, the subtitles come up and it says Dianoga Screams. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they, it was another That's a different view of Dianoga. the Dianoga than we have seen. And I know. And it has, like, a maw and, like, a... A lot more tentacles than I anticipated. Yeah. Star Wars loves tentacles. Star Wars is mostly about tentacles. Just yep. watch it. And eyes at the end of tentacles, too. Yeah. Lots of those. Yeah. Um. Then they end up getting into, like, the main medical area. I was so confused about why they had to go to Baraka, why they had to go to this shit, this former ship to get this this it wasn't really clear as to why they had to go there and not like a regular medical facility uh i mean like it feels like a regular medical facility would have the same um stuff but i guess this is like the way that rex was like i know we did it here in in this sort of scenario yeah. so i know it works this way <laughs> exactly i'm not a doctor hmm. but i've seen this done to myself <laughs> yes it worked on me. Yes. Dr. Drake Ramore <laughs> told me how to do this. More friends Before references. Before he fell down an elevator shaft. Uh, yeah, that was such a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did 
I did like I did like that this was part like to me why this is important or why this is it's going to come back. They're going to yeah. help other clones and they're going to need to find a way to make sure clones can have their chips removed. Like why have this episode which feels like um like there could have been other ways the chip doesn't work on us. Uh we scanned it. It's all defective. Like there 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 could have been different ways to deal with the chip but they specifically wanted to remove the chip so that they could show and know how to remove it in others yeah that's the reason that this is in the show absolutely right and it does feel to me like we have spoken that it is a little bit of an urge okay let's spend some time here so that we can prove that the Bad Batch knows what to do in these situations and they have experience with this Okay, fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the buildup of having Wrecker kind of start to lose his mind was really well done. It was. I it really was so loved well that. Done. The snap, the the way the music pauses. Yeah. This the hand reaches out. It was it was great. Yeah, and you know, like the chip itself is is a parallel to the dark side taking over you. Mm-hmm. Right. It happens very quickly and. You know, suddenly you're no longer in control of yourself, and and the dark side being, and you're aware of it, and you're aware and you of it, can't stop it, and you can't stop it, and like Ugh. honestly, I think that it's a really good metaphor for people to look at, and like when they've gone into say like blind rage mm-hmm. or like anything that can kind of happen to you as a person that like you suddenly like kind of lost your mind for a moment yep it has happened to me it has happened to you it has happened to other people that i know and the best that you can do is even if you weren't in control of yourself even if it wasn't necessarily your fault that these things happened is still apologize to those around you that you either scared or hurt Mm -hmm. and that this episode does that really really well again this episode seems to be or the the show seems to be really good at kind of teaching these like larger concepts to children. Mm-hmm. So I do want to give it like full props and kudos to that. It it these are hard things that adults make mistakes, and even if they weren't in control of themselves at the time, they they still need to make things right. Yeah, I just wish it was a little longer. I wish that yeah. Wrecker had tried to stymie them, didn't have a weapon on him. He leaves to go report to like. You know, let them yeah. chase him down. Um, that would have been interesting. It, I, I did like the conflict. It just seemed so short lived. Yeah, it did seem very short. Like if Wrecker had gotten away, oh, oh no! Now, now have, there's now two, of them. two of them. Yeah. Like that, you would have given me that extra bit of tension. And I understand that you only have so much time, but you spend all that time capturing the roly lizard thing. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. Rolly lizard. <laughs> yeah, it was like an armadillo lizard. It was yeah, yeah, right out of Avatar. Ruby, um, good old Ruby. I hope Ruby comes back. Who's, uh, who's getting? Who's collecting? Is it another Jabba thing? I don't know. It seems like it might be. Like he's Maybe. making a menagerie. Um, <laughs> Tatooine is the worst place for a menagerie. Well, if you've got money, no fair. We find out. We find I mean, out. We see like Ruby in live action and in, in Kenobi or something. We'll be like, oh, Ruby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Saudi Arabia doesn't seem like a place with lots of riches and whatnot, too, right? Uh, yeah, but, and then they have indoor skiing. I yeah, know. I know. So, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I wonder if Jabba's got in- indoor skiing. <laughs> he just pops on the ski. Indoor sledding. It's, it's more like a sled for him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, again, we get the Usa shout out. Toboggan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. like, this is where the legend of Santa was built. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Except oh, it oh, it's oh, not oh, a pack; oh. it's just a it's just a hut. <laughs> it's just more of him. Yeah. Um, we get another uh, total shout out to Omega being the perfect small Lego uh, Star Wars character in in like the game where you can crawl under things yeah like that's the reason she exists <laughs> yeah she can fit in the tight tiny spot <laughs> oh but not that tight tiny spot it was the other other uh, hiding well spot. no that's just that funny. she crawls under the door and then also crawls under like yeah she's a lego star wars video game character the yes, small one that's absolutely true yeah um 
Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that it's, it's been really enjoyable to see everybody interacting together and, you know, finally satisfying to say like, oh, hey, we have a solution to this problem. But again, like to your point, it kind of fell flat. Yeah. Also, it's interesting because there's only nine scenes in this entire oh, yeah? thing. I, I kind of um, glumped the medical bay scenes, even oh, though they there did was, shift like, it. Like no death counts. And zero death count. Yes. Da, 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 da. We have zero, zero deaths, deaths to reports yeah. on death count. That's okay. There I was mean, a great setup. And I feel like they're going to start next episode still on Braca. Yeah, because of where, like, we saw bounty hunters or people in masks. We, yeah, that was the Scrappers Guild. Oh, that, that was the Scrappers Guild who had, like, spotted them. Who reported to the, em- to the, the uh, Empire, empire yeah. because they work for the Empire. Yeah. They reported them. And so I feel like the Empire is coming, Crosshair is coming to Bracca, And we're going to get a big conflict on Bracca. I mean, that would fit with where we are in And if we see Cal season. Kestis in the background, that would be cool. He's he's <laughs> he's like a little tiny kid you still. Think? Yeah, because it's right after Order 66 and we saw him Yeah. like as a kid go as through kid. Order 66. It's like 10 years later that he's on Bracca. But how he's been on Bracca for quite some time at the start of Jedi Fallen Order. Welcome to Bad Batch Reports, Fallen Order Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order <laughs> Jedi edition. Fallen Order edition. Yeah, <laughs> I do want to talk about Jedi Fallen Order at some point with you because well, I played such, it all the way through. I know it's such a cool video game. Yeah, we we could do a post Bad Batch Fallen Order discussion. <laughs> there are so many good things happening in Fallen Order that I'm sad. I thought that it was going to be the beginning of a a long standing series I, they're making I, a second one. Oh, there they is just, going to be more they Cal- just announced but it. i thought that cal kestis was done i i feel like they're moving on to a new character i have no idea so <clears throat> maybe they are maybe it it's all you know what it's that style of gameplay and the storyline that i like there are very few games that i have completed in its entirety prince of persia sands of time is one of the first video games i ever beat in its entirety and yeah. jedi fallen order fits right into that same landscape yeah. um Jade Empire is another one. And again, it falls into the same landscape as this. Yeah. So Jade Empire was really good. Good shout out to Bioware for making so many good games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we get it resolved. Yep. Wrecker gets stunned. Everybody's concerned because he doesn't Phew. wake up right away after the surgery. Who stuns him? I forgot. It was Re- it was Rex. Rex stuns him, right, yeah. Yeah. With his and two guns, like, oh, and I up. always, I always loved Rex for having two guns. Yeah, and he was just like, like I think maybe okay. Now that I'm like thinking about my love of Rex so much, um, I think it was just that he, although he was like a reg or a standard troop, he didn't fit into the standard troops. He didn't have the same hair. He had two guns. His costume had unique markings to it. Like he just always stood out, but he was always meant to st- stand out because he was Anakin's captain. Yeah, you know, and so he had a special thing about him, anyways, because he had to like live and work with Anakin day to day. Yep, <laughs> and so he was always super special. And like I read tons of Rex fiction. Fanfic. Really? Yeah. Oh, like what? Oh, just um, like all about you know how he thought about things and yeah. Like how like different behind the scenes moments that you didn't get to see on screen because we only got to see so much of them, like the clones themselves on screen. There was tons of fan fiction about the clones during the Clone Wars. Hmm, that's awesome. Especially uh, just as the Clone Wars was kind of like cut off during the Disney acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. You can still find it probably out there on fanfic.net. No, I'm good. <laughs> I just wanted to know what you were reading. Oh, no. I mean, um, like... Uh, there was a lot of vignettes. People did full like adventures behind the scenes of Rex, Ahsoka, Anakin, can you know Obi Wan Kenobi, Cody, um, the Domino Squad, which is you know like Fives and mm-hmm. Echo and the original Domino Squad. <laughs> yeah, the original crew. Yeah, that's cool. Would you ever want to play in a clones uh, TTRPG? It's it's funny that you asked that because my cousins actually asked me to join their clones game at one point. Oh, that's neat. Because mm. they were all playing different clones and 
one of my cousins played a uh, experimental female clone. Oh, nice. So it's like these thoughts were out there in the universe. They must be like, that's our game. That's our game. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And like they were all like experimental clones that were out on their own. And, you know, these thoughts were out there. Um, especially since people could see the Bad Batch episodes in their rough form too. And so, That's yeah. That's so cool. It is. All right. So now that we've talked about the episode, how do you feel about this sad batch or bad batch? Oh, yeah. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm going to say med patch because he needed funny. one yeah, on his they head. All, they all get the band-aid afterwards. <laughs> they, they all got the band-aid. Which we don't see many band-aids in Star Wars, so it was kind of nice to see a band-aid. I'm going to go with Had Batch. Okay. Yeah, because that had already happened. Yeah. It did feel, uh, we've been there, done that. It felt necessary, but preordained. Yeah. And and I think that's why we have less, not as much to talk about. Uh Because it's a very linear story. Not a lot happens. It's kind of sluggish in getting to its point. And then the big the big fight piece. There's this old sci-fi movie that scared the crap out of me. And it's really poorly made about these people on a spaceship and an alien gets Wait, into the spaceship. Movie? I don't know what it's called. I saw it on TV and watched like 45 minutes of it. And it still scares me to this day. And this <laughs> blue furred monster ran around and like destroyed people, ripping them apart. And at one point it loses an arm and it's still still going. Blue furred creature? Yeah, it was okay. a blue furred alien that loses an arm at one point. And it was, I mean, I was probably you, like 12 or 13 and it scared the crud out of me. There's, I mean, you can't really just like run across something any longer that you don't know what the name of it is because we have either TV guides. Right. But this was 30 years ago. No, I know. I'm just yeah. saying, oh, I'm, just, okay. I'm yeah. just trying to provide context for people who are like, why wouldn't you know the name of Why it? Why wouldn't Kyle? you know the you name of it? You could just hit PVR or guide, and it would tell you <laughs> blah 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 name, or go to IMDb. No, we had to wait for the commercials, and then it was like, and now returning to the monster of the spaceship that scared the crap out of Kyle when he yeah. was thirteen years old. When I was you know? seventeen, they introduced Channel One, which had a scrolling. Yeah, list. and then you could figure out what it was. But, but you if had you to had wait. like sixty channels. You it was it was pointless. You would basically go, oh no, they're on channel two, and you'd like turn away for thirty seconds because yeah, yeah. When I was growing up, you had to turn the knob to change yeah. the channel on the TV itself. I had a knob one too when I um, when I, when we first got a TV. But enough about being old. This movie really <laughs> scared me, and I I thought about Wrecker, yeah, and how he scared the others because. Wrecker is bigger, stronger, tougher, more immune to pain. Yeah, and they knew and, that they couldn't take him. Yeah, you out. can rip an arm off Wrecker and he will still keep coming. And yeah. that's what hearkened to me, that blue monster in this in space. Uh, <laughs> and I kind of wanted more of that, the, the bit of yeah. horror there, the bit of like, this is the wrong guy on the team to have to have yeah had the 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 chip like, activate if it had been echo or tech like i tech would have eh. screwed them like I tech know. is like on the hierarchy there tech would have called the empire right away and been like we got some road clones here reporting in yeah. i will shut them in lock them in come and pick me up yeah, yeah. yeah they wouldn't have ever even known that tech yeah. had turned <laughs> tech would have just been like ah yes of course and now you are all trapped and I'm returning you and we would no he would have just literally like conked them on the back of the head at the right spot and their chip would have flared to life and they'd be like, All right, let's all go now. Yeah. Like <laughs> No, Wrecker was the right choice, but also like the scary choice. Yeah. I do like scary. I like I don't know that we needed the return of the mission. I I agree with you that they could have given us more of that personal horror yeah. of Wrecker. Like, because they, they spent only, they realized what was happening fairly quickly. Like, he was acting weird and all of that. But it would have been really actually quite cool if he had been more physically threatening or hurt one of the clones. Yeah. Or he'd gotten away to go report. Meanwhile, Scrapper Guild still does their bit where they report, right? To yeah. the Empire. We know the Empire is coming and they're still trying to resolve Wrecker. You just would have upped the stakes of the game that much more. Yeah. And I would have been invested. Now I'm only partially invested. 
uh, because I know next week's episode will be a, a direct continuation because yeah. the Empire is coming before they were going to be able to get off Baraka. Because the threat is still still there. It just wasn't from Wrecker exactly. in the end. Yeah. And so Rex will still be there next week. I mean, he left. Didn't well, they all show up on the same ship? No, he had a he had like a Y wing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't really notice that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then if that's the case, and they had to walk over. It would have been funny. Y wing if... in his colors. It was cool. That's so neat. He painted that. I love him so much. I wonder if 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 they could have fixed it where Wrecker says like, "Why do we park so far away?" And then Hunter just turns to Wrecker and says, "Well, Rex just parked there." And we weren't really going to, you know, we didn't know where he was going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been funny. <laughs> Rex. <laughs> like, oh, Rex. <laughs> he's like, well, we just didn't want to be noticed by the Scrapper Guild. It's like, oh, okay. That's fair too. But mm-hmm. yeah, either way, they get noticed by the Scrapper Guild. And that's what's cool about this. However, I want to make a, a little prediction. Okay. Prediction because, time. Because they're there and we know the the Empire is coming to them. Yeah. I think next episode is actually going to be a crosshair episode. Like fully focused from his perspective? I think it'll be from his perspective leading up to his His, arrival. Oh, interesting. That would be so cool, actually. Right? Like, because that's how you elevate. We want crosshair time. And they're like, no crosshair time. We're like, we want more crosshair time. We want to see him in his sadness. And you're like, Yeah. yeah. Even though I hate him and I'm on record from Clone Wars (laughs) saying how much I hate Crosshair. Like the fact that he is, his chip is the most effective of the, it makes perfect sense because he's a psychopath. He's actually just like that. It's most effective because he's actually just like that. The only cool thing about Crosshair is his toothpick. I like his, uh, I like the thing over his eye. Yeah. Yeah. The target. Yeah. I do like that. That There's interesting things there. Um, I guess it, you have to be kind of like a, a a person that's into sniper rifle type or a sniper like personas, which like they have to be eerily calm and like able to control themselves very well mentally, right? Mm-hmm. Because they have to control their whole bodies to be able to use the sniper rifles. That's a whole thing associated with them they have to like basically hold their breaths and calm themselves down so they don't shake oh yeah yeah it's just the same in disc golf like you should be exhaling as you throw not anything else you should be exhaling as you throw as you as you pull as you pull back you do your breathe you reach back you breathe in and then as you pull through to release you let your air out really you go I'm going to be thinking about this all weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's super important. Just like in dodgeball, when you throw a ball, you should be exhaling on the throw. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That's like the general thing about exercise. You should be exhaling on effort. Yeah, exhale on the effort. Yeah. Inhale, then exhale on effort. Yeah. I think they hold their breath, though. I really do. Like when they're shooting. Oh, shooting. Like, yes. Oh, well, you yeah. can. You, you go. Yeah, you hold your breath, shoot, and then, then release. Ex- or you exhale, release as then, you yeah. shoot. I, you really, I, it is supposed to be effort. It's, a, it's your trigger finger. Yep. I don't know. Uh, anything else you would like to see next episode? I mean, I like the idea of it It leading up yeah. to when they get the call. It's like, the bad batch has been spotted on Braca. And Crosshair's like, let's go. Yeah, I'd like to see the train conveyor bit in Braca. Oh, yeah. I would like to see the train. I would like to see one decrepit falling ship slide into another on Braca. Yeah. Um, Something's going to happen with Omega here, real quick. Something has to happen with Omega. Uh, I did. But my favorite point of the whole episode is when she, like, Almost like she holds Rex's face in her hands, like like she's finally collected a first series. Oh yeah, like because she's like the biggest fangirl of the clones. Exactly. Yeah. You're a you're a series one. How yeah. do you know that? Because of the wrinkles around your eyes. I was like, oh, that's adorable. And Rex would be like, stop making me feel old. <laughs> He's not nearly as old as he is in Rebels. Which Gosh, is like right. Twenty years later. Yes. <laughs> and uh that's what i loved about this episode so yeah. um i looked forward i looked forward to it more than i was i, I was a bit let down okay but 
That's okay. It's still Bad Batch and it was still Star Wars. But I have to tell you, it has been a week of Disney Plus TV and Bad Batch kind of falls by the wayside comparative to the things that we got to see with Loki and MODOK. So, yeah. Loki, MODOK, and three episodes of MODOK. There's more MODOK than there was Loki. Yeah. And now, and then we get Bad Batch as well. Yeah. It's like an affluence of visual riches. I know. I overall like visually stunning. The sound design stunning. Yeah. The music stunning. The characterization stunning. Overall, Bad Batch amazing. But it, to me, it just feels like it's playing in the same safe sandbox right? that it's very comfortable in, whereas we're getting to explore other things in Marvel. And I'm not trying to pit Marvel and Star Wars against each other. I'm just saying, if you're in a race for people's eyeballs, yeah. Bad Batch is not going to win people's eyeballs. With the vistas we get with Braca, though? Yeah. Like, that's so technically complicated. I just, I, the layering I love involved. establishing so- shots. It was good. Oh, so beautiful. And then when they're there on Braca yeah. and up is down and down is up and tight corners are everywhere because things are broken and yeah. there's just so much depth and layering and grime and filth. And then you add the water and the Dianoga. Yeah, no, it, it, the animation is exceptional. Kudos. The whole thing. Jeez. The most it's complicated technical episode of them all so far. Yes. Like this, there's so many details. But it's like, again, like, did this need to happen? Yeah. I guess it needed to happen. They felt like it needed to happen. And so it did. Yeah. Jennifer Corbett has a plan and this is a key part of it. Removing the chip is important. N- knowing that they know how and yeah. that they can is important and they spent an entire episode to tell us that so it is important soon they will be able to figure it out and they'll be able to take that tech with them and they'll be able to literally just slap it on someone's head and it'll go and pull it out the chip and they can start like we can reclaim your clones for you wholesale exactly actually that would be really an interesting thing for tech to do is to like make a miniaturized version of it it'll be it'll give tech purpose in the way that i thought it was going to give omega purpose Yes. She still is bait and uh, the heart of the team. I would like to see her come into her own more, which yeah, that'll will happen take time. Over time. Yeah. That'll, that'll be Omega season two. <laughs> Probably. I hope they age her up. Selfishly. Yeah, they'll Ezra her pretty good, I think. Yeah, Ezra grew like a foot. <laughs> that was so, and, and it's so true, too. Like, boys, they just stay at that height forever, then suddenly, bam! <laughs> Oh, you're like what? taller. Like- yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas girls always seem to be like this slow, steady general progression of like, when are you going? You're all, you're taller than me now. Oh my. Yeah, she's not quite there yet. Not ours, but I was yeah. referring to Savannah. Yeah, uh, from Tavern Tales Junior. Um, my other <laughs> podcast. Yeah, comes out every other Tuesday that stars our children and a couple of their friends. They started out very short, and now they are not. Yeah, they they started out nine years old, if you can believe it. That's crazy. And now they're 13 and 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like, again, we're we're kind of vamping a little bit on this episode just because there, there hasn't been a lot to say other than, okay, it's about the rebellion yep. and gathering the different pieces of the rebellion. We've seen that multiple times. It's about the clones. It's about freeing the clones. And it's about how you survive in the meantime while you're trying to do a mission. Right. And we didn't even talk about that part. We didn't talk about the fact that they haven't even figured out how the how the world works and money works yet. And yeah. Sid's like wrapping them across the face. Yeah. They're like, it was worth three times that. And she's like, how much do you think you owe me? We don't owe you. Um, yeah, you do. You've been docking here. fees, food, <laughs> uh, rations. I've been paying for everything. I've been outfitting your group when you go off on your mission. And then 12 packages of Mantel mix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I get why it's called Mantel mix. Because they're on Ord Mantel. Yeah. That makes so much sense. That, Mantel mix. It does make sense. <laughs> but it's it's Chicago popcorn to me. Egg, the Chicago yeah, style absolutely. popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good cheddar. It's got the caramel. It's delicious. No, thanks. <laughs> no, no, no. So, they're, yes, they're still figuring out how to exist in this new world. 
the rebellion is building yeah. and freeing the clones. Those are the major themes that we have seen in the show thus far. Yeah. And those were all repeated in yep. this episode. So, but they, I did, we did see that development with Sid, with them making the realization like, oh yeah, we're, we have to become fully fledged adults. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be full humans now. Right? Yes. We, we are responsible individuals. I, I wonder how much that is for kids that leave uh, home at 18 and enlist in the army like they literally go from one parental figure to the government yeah, as every, their parental everything figure everything taking care of them and yeah. they're completely taken care of yeah uh down to everything coordinated for them and their pay is structured and put they into their accounts they never have to make decisions and, about what to wear and if you're in the army for any length of time how hard is it then to come back that's a i, I would like to to chat with anybody who's gone through that and 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 learning to be an, a, a fully functional adult post something like that. Yeah. I mean, one of my goals as a parent is to teach my kids how to do everything that they need to do to take care of a house. Yep. You know, and their own finances because those are just life skills that I want to make sure that they have before they are off on their own. Yeah. And, you know, they can always call us for help, but. And knowing you have enough money, you have to have enough money in the bank that in case your furnace just suddenly dies on you one week. <laughs> um, but also knowing that uh, maybe yes. it's a better idea to clean and exchange out your your furnace humidifiers filter every couple of years as opposed to letting it go for like a decade and potentially being the reason why you have to spend $1,700. Oh, is that the reason? I, it's not, there wasn't really much in the way of evidence yeah, because it's so dry here. If there was yeah. any water damage, it would have dried and was not clearly articulated. There was water damage around it. Could it have had moist air blow into the circuit breaker of the circuit board and then short out the circuit board? That is the most likely thing that has happened, um, given that what occurred. Yeah. Um. So in the end of the day, we didn't do something ten years ago, and as a result, uh, it fell failed last year and we're now reaping the loss of uh, uh the money as a result of our furnace problems <laughs> the into, into short the... story short uh yeah, yeah our furnace blew out this week and would not blow any hot air only cold air and it got really cold and stormy and rainy here and we felt like we needed to turn the furnace on and then it just made our house colder <laughs> so yep when you're sitting there at i don't even know what temperature that is in Fahrenheit for those who really listen it was uh it was nine degrees in the house at one point yeah Celsius which I think is like 40 ish yeah 40 45 yeah Amer in Fahrenheit so yeah. it was very cold in here uh, yeah but we managed to get it fixed and got it resolved uh, and now I know and have learned my lesson <laughs> for next time <laughs> now into the Gould house you have come to understand our weekly problems <laughs> Well, at least just this week's problems. Gosh. Yeah. We had to do a little surgery of our own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our furnace's inhibitor chip was defective. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All it right. It executed Order 66 on his hard time. It did. Yes. All right. Uh, do you think that anything outside of those three themes that I mentioned, i.e., learning how to be adults, um, you know, the rebellion in general and what they owe to society and the universe and freeing all of their brothers is going to be any, are they going to explore anything else outside of that in this season? I, hmm, I I'm going to hold off on answering that until I see the next episode. Cause I feel like we don't know what they're telling us about Rampart and Crosshair. Okay. I think that those are great through lines, but Bad Batch is currently missing one fifth of the party. Yeah. And I think that he has a relevant storyline that is important to what is to come. Fair. And I don't think it's really connected with the three things you just said. So, no. What do you think this story is going to tell us? I want to hear. Viewer at home. Yes. Listener behind the screens there. Yes. I don't think that was directed at me, even though Marie Claire said it to me while smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hit us up on Twitter or Instagram yep. or email the show and we will uh, answer your questions live on air. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, if you DM me, I'll bring it up. 
So. Oh yeah, that's true. You are you are more likely to bring stuff up. But no, I I want to know if there's other things that we're missing as far as like the themes of the show. I think these are really strong things to be talking yep. about and to have as as kind of through lines through the show. Um, but yeah, if you have any other thoughts on what else they're saying, happy to hear. Yeah, would love to know, Jennifer Corbett. If you're out there. Hit me up. I, I want to know what this is all about. What What is the through line of the season? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can tell us that because it's not going to reveal anything. Yeah. If you just talk about the fact that it's about found family or it's about. I mean, un- there's that too. You know, uncovering obviously. your own potential or uh, working around, you know, breaking down societal regulation. Yeah. Lots of those sorts of things are going on. So. Yeah. It's really cool. And um the fact that those themes are very, very clear within the show is uh, is kind of exciting, too, because sometimes you have to slap viewers in the face with what's happening. Yeah. Shoot. I was going to I had one last thing. Battle scars. Uh, hmm. The title of the episode, which we talked about, actually was apropos this time because they end up up all with battle with scars. A new scar. But I get I feel like it could have been better titled and that this these titles this season have they're so over arc. Yeah. And then they don't really come to bit be- like, <laughs> all right, well, nobody has, be- like, Wrecker's got a lot of battle scars. Yeah. The his, dude's his entire face, face is like. An eye and an ear are gone, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and when we didn't really touch on that at all. And they sure they got a little new scar from getting the inhibitor chip removed. But does that seem like battle scars? So it seems like once again, the titling is. Uh, like slightly off it's the same thing with me where i'm starting to think about the word bad batch as well yeah because they're not bad no and neither was the batch the batch wasn't bad either it was deliberate so again like the title of the show and now the title of the episodes are just slightly off for you ah, they yeah. just there's a juxtaposition here of there's a dissonance yeah that's yeah. that's happening where they're yeah they're saying one thing and doing another Oh, I did want to shout out uh, the honor, like the importance of tradition um, with Wrecker and Omega having a we completed a mission tradition. Yes. I love that so much. And it's actually like one of those things that I consider to be really, really important as a parent to be like, we have our traditions. We have our Christmas traditions. We have our Easter traditions. You know, we have our family traditions. A, we had leftovers. We get dessert. Oh, yeah, we bought- All right. <laughs> a blue furred monster with only one arm. <laughs> That's on a spaceship. Yes. spaceship. What is this movie? I don't know. If you know what I'm talking about, though, hit me up because <laughs> I don't So you can never watch ever it. See that. It, it's so you can so, avoid it. It's so bad. The monster is so laughable. And like, even today, I'm like, that's a man in a costume. Like, it's obvious. But it's just, oh, it's so scary. I'm dying. Okay. (laughs) Much like those poor spacemen in that (laughs) ship. Rest in peace. Pieces. Oh, my gosh. All right. Where can people find you, Kyle? We have gone on long enough. Cowering about- in my closet. I think. Uh, no, eagerly anticipating next week's episode. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I get the feeling we're coming up on something big here. I mean, it would fit because it would be the second half of the season. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that works from a timing perspective. I meant where can people find you on like the internet if they are looking for you? <laughs> Probably Googling blue furred alien. Anyway, no. Uh, at the end of the day, come check me out on Tavern Tales DM. You can also hit up our Twitter, <laughs> Tavern underscore Tales. Uh, what? What's got you now? It's just this is blue furred master. I know, right? Together almost <laughs> 20 years. You did not know about this. I've never talked about this before ever, have I? I just know what to to prank you with someday. <laughs> Find out what this movie is. Get the costume reproduced and run after you down the hallway. Huh? No? <laughs> I mean, there are worse ways to divorce someone. So <laughs> no, no, I'll just tell this to Will, and he'll save it in the back of his head for twenty years. Don't you dare! He would do that. He loves scaring people. <laughs> He hates the fear of being scared himself, but loves seeing it on other people's I know. faces. He'll listen to this podcast one day and then oh, he'll be no. like, I know what to do to my dad. What have I done? 
and and like he'll he'll sit on it for like 15 years like to be okay so just to put it in perspective i know we're a bit over time at this point but event horizon is at the same level as that blue furred <laughs> alien movie for right. me yeah that movie scared you too event horizon is the scariest thing ever I don't, I don't like horror movies. I saw Event Horizon at like 19 years old and then could not sleep for like three days. <laughs> I didn't want to close my eyes. I did not want to be in the dark. Fair. I don't. You didn't see Event Horizon, did you? I don't watch horror movies. Yeah, you're so lucky. Very, very rarely. I've seen a few. but It's not even considered to be a horror movie. It's like a thriller. It's a supernatural thriller, but it's just so mentally draining and... Is it just because horrifying. you were 13 when you saw this blue furred monster? Probably. Yeah. It's like when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Beetlejuice scared me. Well, yeah, Beetlejuice is scary. Yeah. No, absolutely. Beetlejuice is scary. Ghostbusters like, like was the, scary. The, Gremlins like... is scary. Everything that developed into a, we finally found the way to make a PG-13 movie when PG-13 first came out. That's a horrifying movie that has scarred me for life. And Labyrinth <laughs> is one of those movies. Labyrinth scared you? I was eight years old. Okay. I went to see the movie on a date with my with my f- girlfriend. I mean, because I was a kid, there was a space between those two words, um, who lived next door named Stacy. And we went to go see that movie. And we were 20 minutes into that movie. And I had I said we had to leave. And her mom had to go and get her money back for the tickets because um, I could not hon- handle that movie. And then I went home embarrassed for the rest of my life. <laughs> I need you but to you make notes. you knew that note- story. I, yes, I did. I need you to make notes next time. <laughs> Why? I'm just kidding. I have. I had all the notes in my head of all the things I wanted to talk about for this episode. I just talked about other things as well today. <laughs> Maybe I just really missed chatting with my wife. I know. We didn't see each other all, all day. All day. <laughs> this is what and I, I talked to my folks and not you. So. I know. Anyway. This is more like therapy, I think. <laughs> Well, if you're still listening, thanks for tuning in to Kyle's Brain. (laughs) We'll see you next week. Yep. See you next week. Cheers. Thank you for listening to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host. Our music is orchestral music by Christy Carew for What the Force. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash what the force we like to thank all our patrons especially those who love and are obsessed with what the force brad cheryl bell melody night huntress in wild space felicia how rude anna perez and the cow mom neil james joelle and d christian luca josh johnson scott c susan and adam dyson make sure to like and subscribe on youtube or leave a five-star review on itunes or other pod apps people find the show check out our other channel on youtube or other podcast feeds what the fiction you can connect with us on twitter at wt force show what the force podcast on facebook or our website whattheforce.ca or on our discord links are in the liner notes feel free to reach out and start a conversation cheers